Okay, so a few of you asked how I uh, how I pack for a dive trip. Uh, I'll uh, go ahead and show you. It's pretty easy when it's just me. I have to worry about the wife and the kids. Uh, I can pack super light. So, uh, yeah, here you go. Take a look at this. So I usually travel with three bags when I'm going solo. Uh, Carry-on bag, uh, e-bags, laptop bag. Um, pretty pretty straightforward. <laughs> We've got in there a few knickknacks, USB sticks, cash, wallet, credit cards, um, passport most importantly. Uh, that's the most important thing. What have we got in this pocket? Uh, pouch with a bunch of cords in. Battery block, USB charger. Um, comes in super handy for long flights that don't have a USB charging port or boat journeys or even just being out on a day boat whilst diving allows me to charge GoPro and dive lights and that kind of thing up. Um, oh, little uh, little GoPro mount um, for a tripod. It's the quarter inch um, 20 coarse thread, uh, 20 pitch thread rather. The GoPro mount, laptop charger, uh, USB charger. The other thing I throw in there is my um, wireless Bose headphones for the boat, the sports ones, so they've uh, somewhat waterproof. Bose. Um, noise cancelling headphones for boats and airplane journeys. Sunglasses case so they don't get trashed. Uh, books, note magazines, that kind of stuff. Um, but uh, for travelling, I use a Surface Pro. Uh, most of my stuff's done on my iMac in the office. So I did have a MacBook Pro, but it was just heavy. Uh, and I didn't really use it that much, so I got rid of it, just picked up this Surface Pro. The other good thing with this guy is it actually has a, somewhere, I can't remember where, it has a slot for a, a SIM card, so it means I can actually use it uh, out and about without having to tether it to my phone. And then I also have a pouch at the back. Oh, ah, trail mix. There's your look. Beef jerky, you never know when you're going to get hungry. Ah, oh, and the spare t-shirt. Um, I usually keep my toothbrush in there as well. It's always good to freshen up um, at the end of a flight. All right, so this guy's the fourth element 60 liter expedition bag. Bright orange, don't see many of them around. At least it makes it easy to, uh, to spot. It has a couple zippers. It comes with these... Um, backpack attachments as well so it makes it super easy to maneuver it's not fully waterproof um because of the zipper but you know it does a pretty darn darn good job at keeping things keeping things dry so the top exposure protection so i have plenty of room in here so if i needed to put a five mil wetsuit in i could but generally my go-to for tropical diving is the uh fourth element thermocline series so that's the the full length uh, suit, so by layering it's going to make things a lot easier. Got some clothes, some dirty shorts. Okay, so this is, oh, get rid of that. So the fun stuff, BCD. So the great thing about this, this is the Aqualung Outlaw. Um, super minimal BCD, super comfy, um, very modular and very flexible in terms of its design. But the great thing is it breaks down, so it's going to make packing super easy. So you can see, let me move this paddy case out of the way, we'll come to that in a minute. So we've got the, the back plate here. Okay. Then we have the bladder. So this is the 12 pound bladder. Um, yeah, I could probably jump up. I think it's the 25 is the next one. You know, it's great for diving, but actually if you had to spend a, a prolonged time at the surface, um, it just barely keeps my head above water. Then we have the shoulder straps, the waist straps, and then somewhere in my bag, yeah, inside my booty, there's the two weight pockets. So they do, these are actually the trim pockets, um, but they do, they hold, I think, five pounds each, give or take, um, but they do have weight pockets as well, the same Sherlock kind of system that you find on uh, all Aqualung's weight integrated BCDs. Uh, let's see, the last thing we've got 
is the the tank band. Yeah. So that builds up the system. But if you look how small <laughs> and, and minuscule that actually is, I mean, the video really doesn't do it much justice. But but that's it. It's nothing nothing to it. Uh, I'll do another video just dedicated on the Outlaw itself and all the different components and how it assembles, um, just so I don't don't uh, overpopulate content on this on this video. Um, a pair of booties. I don't like to go barefoot. Um, you never know what you may step on if you're wading into water. One thing I noticed with these Aqualung booties though was the stitching right here at the back. I don't know if you can see it. Gave me a couple of blisters. I, mean, I use these boots when I'm using my fins just in the pool. Um, so it's never for really an extended period of time or for, you know, kicking um, continuously throughout a dive. So um, I may look at changing those for that, that reason. But otherwise, they're great booties, nice solid soles. Let's get those out of the way. Thermocline again, a pair of shorts. Um, and then, oh, I did have the top, but I, I left the top behind um, because it was starting to get a little old and a little thin material was starting to separate, so I need to get a new one. Good thing with the thermocline is uh, it's about equivalent thermal property-wise of two and a half to three millimeters, but it's neutrally buoyant, so don't need any additional weight, which is a great thing. We've got toiletries, water bottle. Which, actually, if I open it up and put the camera down, has more toiletries in it. Yeah, yeah, yeah stuff in there. You get the, get the idea. Just trying to save a little bit of space. This hasn't been packed particularly well, I'm afraid. I was in a bit of a rush um, to get things packed up. I was waiting for dive gear to dry. Everything's still damp in here. Uh, board shorts, cap. Rash guard, um, tons of t-shirts, boxer shorts, more boxer shorts, more t-shirts, ton of t-shirts, snorkel, always useful to take, got a towel at the bottom just to protect everything, and then another hand towel there which I use, and then my RK3 fins with my mask inside the foot pocket to protect it. Okay, three great fins, love them. And then inside the other one, got my finger spool, Apex finger spool, um, milled from a single piece of aluminum, love it. And then just a small uh, SMB. And that's it. So that's, that's the uh, Expedition Series bag. Then the next up is the Peli case. So this is, I think it's, I can't remember what model number it is. Does it say, yeah, 15, 15, oh, turn that around for you. 1510 case, designed as carry-on um, in terms of its sizing. So, pop this guy open. Oh, a couple of shirts as well. Put those out of the way somewhere. A couple of spare changes of clothes, just in case. Normally I'd go ahead and squeeze my BCD in here too, but because it was still damp, I didn't want it to, to damage any of the electronics and things to get even get, get messed up. Um, O2 analyzer. I knew they had one out there, but as I was teaching a, a Nitrox course, it made sense just to take our own one. Um, so here is the other part um, of the BCD. So it's got the Air 2 on, or the Air, Aqualung Air Source. Okay, which helps me then um, minimize the amount of hoses on my regulator. So this is the X Apex XTX 200, um, a transmitter for my dive computer, the low pressure inflator hose, and then this guy's got a quick disconnect on for, oh, let's see if I can put this down for a second. quick disconnect for the regulator and you'll see why I have that in just a minute so that's the regulator so right there those two components go get wet go dive 
Uh, little fourth element 20 liter dry bag. I use this for taking on the boat. I keep the phone, glasses, and uh, you know, t shirt and stuff dry. What else have we got in here? Got computer case. So, on this trip, I, uh, I was testing out the Sunto Eon Core. Super compact, really nice dive computer. And then also the Scuba Pro G2, which is also a very nice dive computer. Um, I am leaning towards the Sunto Core though. Um, size and weight makes a big difference. But I noticed a couple quirky things on it. Um, in, in terms of the maximum operating depth was slightly off compared to all calculations for, for nitrox mixes. And also the no fly time was horrendous uh, for some reason. So I, I need to look into that now I'm back. A uh, pouch here with a couple of accessories and GoPro batteries, chargers. Let's see. There you go. Um, lights. I had the uh, underwater kinetics uh, aqua light. So these were changeable heads. Unfortunately, the light floated whilst I was away. So I need to figure out if I'm going to replace the body or maybe just sell these and change to something else. Little flasher for night dives. Super useful star tool. Uh, wrenches, Allen keys, um, and a tank tank tool on it there. Uh, let's see what else we got. Carabiner. Everyone needs a carabiner. Little backup. It even be used as a primary light. I think it's 200, 220 lumen. 220 lumens. Scuba Pro Nova. Um, pretty powerful. I love putting bolt snaps on everything too. Just so keep it nice and secure and tucked out of the way. Double-ended bolt snap, holding accessories, banging your tank, uh, noise maker. Um, this guy here, Leatherman Wave. <laughs> yeah, toolbox in a pouch, basically. You then got. Let's see what we got here. Uh, wish I had another pair of hands. So, OTS. Guardian. Oh. Do-rag. Just to stop my head from burning. Um, let's come back to some of this other stuff. Well, actually inside this bag. Paralens. Paralens dive camera. Super sweet. Logs your dives. Tracks uh, or superimposes onto video depth and temperature. Um, found it very useful. Be interesting to see if they come out with like a macro lens attachment for those that want to tend to use it free-handed rather than attaching it to my mask. GoPro, uh, which also flooded but still works, so I need to look into that. Um, and then OTS Guardian Stealth full face mask. Um, does have the buddy phone communications kit what I ended up doing as well was actually getting the receiver or receiver only and uh, holding it to the back of the GoPro so it would then record audio as well underwater so here's the stealth regulator that attaches to the front of the Guardian mask this is why I've got the quick release on my second stage on my regulator system it means I can just switch between these two without having to use a wrench and changing hoses out and whatnot then we've got this guy here. Let's see if we can open this up one handed. DJI Mavic Pro drone. Um, great for getting that aerial footage of dive boats and dive sites. Unfortunately, the wind when we were in the Philippines was a little strong, so I only got one one flight, and I haven't even checked the footage yet. So another pouch here. It's the controller for it, and then this guy is just. Uh, let's see. Spare battery. Um, this backside room for laptop. Um, sometimes with that Surface Pro, I'll carry a external USB monitor so that can go in there logbook some 
paperwork from the resort we stayed at. Then on this side, pull this out. Just another pouch that has. <laughs> I found one of my kids' socks wrapped up in in uh, some clothing I packed. Cords, USB charging cords, um, some lenses for the for the GoPro. That's the USB cord and charging cable, data transfer cable for the the um, Sunto. What's this guy? Skyrim wireless mobile hotspot. Charger for the drone. New cables. Sharpie. And that's it. Okay, so there you have it. Quick rundown of uh, what I tend to take on a tropical trip. Um, I'll start going into some individual videos on the different components and the reasons why I, I choose the gear that I choose um, as well. One thing we missed out was the, uh, the Manfrotto tripod uh, and then iPhone holder as well on the end. Um, yeah, any questions, let me know.